Hey everyone, welcome to this video really about what is Azure AD Connect doing under the covers and what is that link between the AD account and the Azure AD account. And as always, if this is useful, please go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe. So we always think about, well, we have Active Directory and what we do is we extend that Active Directory up into Azure AD. Essentially, we take the objects we have here, for example, I've got this user, and we extend it, so now there's a user object up here. When we have services like Azure and Office 365 and Partner Cloud Solutions, they trust Azure AD as their identity provider. And we really just kind of draw this box that we say, hey, yeah, well, to, to get that synchronization happening, well, we just have this thing, Azure AD Connect. And there's been a number of different iterations. There was Dir Sync, Azure AD Sync. Now we're on this Azure AD Connect. And we always really focus on the fact that the flow of replication is really this way. So it's objects from AD going into Azure AD. There is some limited write back if I'm an Exchange hybrid um, environment. There is some write back that way. If I'm using Windows Hello for Business uh, hybrid certificates, if I'm using conditional access with ADFS, um, again, there's some device write back. But for pretty much 99.9% .9 of the time, the flow is always that way. So what's really happening under the covers? And it's really about Azure AD Connect is actually made up of many, many different components. It's built off of MIIS, which was then Forefront Identity Manager, which was now Microsoft Identity Manager, which is why if you actually go and look at the synchronization service engine, it's MIIS client is actually what we use to interact with it. Now, for most organizations, you have one AD Forest uh, and one Azure AD instance. So you're going to have this one Azure AD Connect. Even if you have multiple forests, if there's just one Azure AD instance, then you're going to have one Azure AD Connect. It can connect to multiple AD forests. Now, what's actually happening is I'm drawing these lines from AD to kind of Azure AD Connect, and then the line out from Azure AD to Azure AD instance. And that's actually what's happening in Azure AD Connect. It has connectors. So if we actually jump over and look at this, we can see right here. So this is me just kind of looking at, well, here's my Azure AD instance. I can go and look at, well, yes, Azure AD Connect is sync status is enabled. I can see when the last sync was. I can see I'm sending the password hash. And what I'm going to do here is if we actually jump over to my Azure AD Connect instance, if we go and look at my Azure AD Synchronization Service Manager, and if we were to actually look at Task Manager, we see it's the MIIS client. And what we see is if we go to Connectors, well, I can see I have two connectors. I have a connector from Active Directory Domain Services, my AD, and I have a connector for my Azure AD. And for each of these, we have various kind of configurations that we can use around those. And also what's interesting for each of these, I could say, well, there's this thing that says, well, if I can search connector space, and I could just search all of it, and it shows me all of my various objects from my Active Directory that it knows about. And there's a whole bunch of these I could see, for example, Clark Kent. And I can look at the detail, I can see it's well, it's got a given name and a description, it's got an object GUID, it has an object SID. Remember these really, the object GUID only changes if I change it to another forest if I move the user. The SID changes if I change it between domains. And then it's MSDS consistency GUID and various other things. And I can see a lineage to actually kind of show me, well, what's, what's kind of happening with this object? And then likewise, there's a connector space for Azure AD. And if I look at that, there's a whole bunch of objects, but I really have no clue what any of these are. I could randomly click on one, 
and then I could see, oh, okay, well, that's a Dursink. So that's an object there. Could click on a different one. Okay, that was my dummy user. But it's very hard to kind of see what's happening. So I'm going to think about, I have these two connectors and I have these connector spaces. So if we go back to our picture, what's actually happening is we draw this Azure AD Connect, but in reality, there's this connector space for AD, and there's a connector space, I should do a different color on that one. Then there's a connector space for Azure AD, where it's populating the objects, it's representative of the objects in AD here, and then representative of the objects in Azure AD here. And then it kind of merges them together. So in the middle, we have this thing called a metaverse where I bring and I join those various objects together from the different connectors I actually have. And it's through this metaverse that we can join the objects and we can work out, well, how do these relate to each other? And really my whole point for this is, well, what's the link between this and this? How, how do we really understand what those links are? Now, what actually happens is there's a series of processes that have to run to kind of get things from AD, to get it into the metaverse, and then get it into Azure AD. And if we actually go back again, we can see those. So if I actually go and look at my operations, we'll look at the last iteration. So we can see here there's a delta import from AD, then there's a delta import from Azure AD. So those two things right now, those delta imports, what they're doing is if we go to our picture, the delta import is this. And it's a delta because it's only taking what's changed. So the import is bringing the objects from AD into its connector space. And then the import here is bringing things into the connector space in AD Connect. I should write that's a delta import as well. There is a full on the first synchronization, but after that, it's just the deltas. So those delta imports are bringing things into the respective connector spaces. So then what it's going to do, and we can see this, is it now does a delta synchronization. And what the delta synchronizations are doing, as you would expect, is it's now taking the data here and actually getting it into the metaverse. So that's kind of the sync. So now we're actually bringing those objects in into the metaverse. And then you'll see the next thing it does, and it's actually going both ways. So that sync is a sync. So it's checking both ways, hey, into the metaverse and what's changed back out to the connector space. And the last thing it does is it does an export. What's actually changed from the connector spaces to the actual targets. So now we can think about, okay, then the last thing is this export, which is most of the traffic. And then again, there is kind of this go that way. If there was some kind of device right back again, even if I change my password in Azure AD, I've got like premium P1 or above, it does not take this route to change passwords. If I change my password, there's a special agent that gets communicated to, which writes it on-prem, and then it replicates back up to Azure AD if I'm doing password hash. So some of the things I can send optionally is things like password hash. As part of that process, um, I can send other details. Now this runs by default every 30 minutes. Now I can change that to a higher value, I cannot make it lower. So 30 is the minimum value that I can sync this built in. But things like passwords, they're actually replicated every two minutes and I cannot change that. Now we can actually see that 30 minutes. So if we jump back over, and if I jump to PowerShell for a second, I can actually get, so I'm running this command here, get AD sync scheduler. And if I execute that, you can see down here on the bottom, the various values. So it shows me the allowed sync interval. 
So that's the minimum value, so 30 minutes. What I currently have, 30 minutes, and what do I want? Maybe what am I changing it to? And if I change that value, which I can do, my next command here could change it to, let's say, 45 minutes. Even if I changed it to 45 minutes, and we'll run that, it won't take effect until the next sync cycle. So here we can see, well, yeah, I've requested it to be 45, but it's not 45 yet. Now I could force a sync. If I do this start AD sync cycle delta, and I run that, what we would see is actually in my Azure AD Connect, it will actually go and force a sync cycle over here. And then once that's completed, so we can see it's doing actually stuff right now. So you can see it's starting to run it all there. And once that's completed, the change will actually take effect. So if I do a get again, now I can see my effective value is also 45. So that's how I made the change. And I don't want it to be 45. I want to stick it to 30. So we'll leave that there. So, so those are all kind of the things that are actually happening to make this work. We can see there's all these processes happening to, to sync and all that good stuff. But I still not answered the question, what is the link between these accounts? And obviously the metaverse has the join based on attributes. There's like a hard link and a soft link. So the first time you synchronize, if maybe um, the object was already there, it tries to match on things like the UPN and some proxy addresses, but then it will set up a hard link. That's like an absolute link. So in Azure AD, there's a source anchor. It's an immutable ID that relates to the AD object. So the Azure AD knows what AD object it relates to. AD does not, there's no attribute in AD that says this is your Azure AD equivalent. This essentially does not care. So link is the Azure AD account knows what AD account it has. So where is that? And we kind of alluded to it earlier. So if we jump back over, I kind of talked about well, what are some of the attributes? So we can actually start off looking in the metaverse. So this time, instead of looking at the operations or the connectors, I can go to metaverse search. And you can see here, I can actually add another search, refresh this. I can see all my various objects. Now I'm gonna focus on Clark Kent. So here I can see, well, it has this kind of cloud anchor value and it has this source anchor value. This is the one I really care about. Now it also has things like object SID, object SID string, but I don't see things like the GUID here. That's because the metaverse doesn't really care about those things. But I can go to connectors and actually see, well, what objects does this actually join? You can see there's sync rules and you can actually customize these to show me how they link. So here I can see, well, okay, Clark Kent, here's that object GUID. And the way this works is the modern Azure AD connects. When it first replicates an object, it takes the object GUID and copies it into MSDS consistency GUID. The reason it does this is that, as I mentioned, object GUID would change if I migrated the user to another forest. Well, we don't wanna lose the link between AD and the Azure AD object. So it copies the object GUID into MSDS consistency GUID. So now even if I move it between forests, the MSDS consistency GUID would get copied with it and would not change. So the source anchor value in Azure AD matches the MSDS consistency GUID. Now you might wonder, again, you can kind of look at the lineage of how these things got there. It doesn't look like that. Because if I look at that source anchor, that does not look anything like that big DS consistency GUID I just saw. And it's really just because they're in a different format. So what I could actually do is if we actually look at the Azure AD value, there I can see, well, there's that source anchor. And what we can do is I'm gonna copy that, Control C. And if we go over to PowerShell, I'm gonna type in that value. Well, paste in that value. 
just delete all this other stuff. So this is the value from that source anchor. So I'm going to set that to a variable and then convert it from a base64 string. And now at the bottom, you can kind of see this value, 1eb, 3b, a9, etc, etc. So if now we jump back over to here, actually let's just unmaximize this for a second. Oh, wrong one. Okay, let's unmaximize this. Problem with running Bastion, I get confused about my links. So here, if we open this up, and if I go back, and if I look at my account, and I look at, well, what is my MSDS consistency GUID? Well, you'll see they match. This value here matches this value here. So that's how they link together. The source anchor in Azure AD maps to the MSDS consistency GUID that we actually have in um, our Active Directory. So Azure AD Connect populates that uh, MSDS consistency GUID with the object GUID, and then that travels with the object even if it moves between forests. And really that, that's kind of how they all link together. That's all that kind of goodness and that, that conversion that makes all of this stuff work. So when you think about well, how do they really work together, it's that source anchor in Azure AD just maps to the MSDS consistency GUID uh, of the user. And that's it. So I hope that was useful. Uh, until next time, stay safe.